live forever in Jesus Christ the Lord. You who labor for justice, you who labor for peace, you who steady the plow in the field of the In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And good morning. It's good to be with you once again. Father Paul Graney coming uh, uh, before you. Thanks be to God uh, from St. Patrick's in White Lake. And today we celebrate once again the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ upon the cross and uh, grateful for the great promises that he has won for us, promises of eternal life. Let us receive this precious gift once again more worthily by first acknowledging our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, <clears throat> all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let 
let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading for the book of Job. Job spoke, saying, Is not man's life on earth a drudgery? Are not his days those of a hireling? He is a slave who longs for the shade, a hireling who waits for his wages. So I have been assigned months of misery, and troubled nights have been allotted to me. If in bed I say, When shall I arise? Then the nights drag on. I am filled with restlessness until the dawn. My days are swifter than the weaver's shuttle. They come to an end without hope. Remember, my life is like the wind. I shall not see happiness again. The word of the Lord. first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, there is no reason for me to boast, for an obligation has been imposed upon me, and woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have a recompense, but I found unwillingly that I have been entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my recompense? That when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge so as to not make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in this regard, I have made myself a slave to all 
so as to win over as many as possible. To the weak, I become weak, to win over the weak. I have become all things to all, to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have a share in it. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her. He approached, grasped her hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her, and she waited on them. When it was evening, after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak, because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him. And on finding him, said, Everyone is looking for you. He told them, Let us go on to the nearby villages, that I may preach there also. For this purpose have I come. So he went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. St. Paul, today, he's written to the Christians in Corinth, and uh, St. Paul, uh, as always, he is, uh, you can sense his uh, passion, and he's on fire about preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, because his entire identity and his life's mission was to make Christ known to the world. Evangelization. Let's call St. Paul the greatest evangelist in our church. And evangelization, talking about our faith, sharing our beliefs of all the things that Jesus commands us to do as his disciples, it's, this is definitely up there as one of the most uh, intimidating things that we're supposed to be doing. Many things we're supposed to do are challenging, of course, for sure. You know, the commandments, you know, doing things we ought to be doing, refraining things that we are not, uh, should not be partaking in. Um, but we get caught up and tripped up from now on and again, but Christ, he's there to forgive us. But being invited by the Lord to share the gospel can make us feel at times a little, you know, squeamish, right? <laughs> uh, one of the things we do, you know, Lent's coming up, one of the things we do, we give up meat on Fridays, you know, we've got it, yeah. No, no problem, you know, typically, you know, although I would say for myself, there's no other days of the year that I want to eat meat more than I do on a Friday during Lent. I don't know just what it is, probably because I'm thinking about don't eat meat today, don't eat meat today, so meat is just on my mind all day long. But anyways, 
But、uh, talking about and sharing our faith, that can just be kind of a scary thing, right? We are putting ourselves out there, making ourselves vulnerable. What will others think of me? How will they respond and treat me? Is this going to bring down some heat on me? Will I be able you know, to make sense of the faith? Or am I going to just confuse people even more? But fear not, Jesus Christ is with us until the end of the age, just as he promised his apostles as、uh, he went and ascended into heaven as he commanded them to go and preach. In our church, it's filled with stories of people who overcame these exact fears. Many of them even gave up their very lives、uh, because God had called them to go and preach in very difficult situations. In 16th century England, during the days of the Protestant Reformation, during Queen Elizabeth's reign, there was a、uh, young man named Edmund Campion. And Edmund Campion was Oxford University's very best and very brightest student. He's extremely talented, and you know, the whole world was at his fingertips. He could have done anything and could have been anybody. And even Queen Elizabeth herself personally saw to it that Edmund Campion was looked after and taken care of. But Edmund Campion, he was a Catholic. And the whole thing about England breaking away from the Catholic Church and establishing it, you know, itself as its own denomination、uh, with the monarch、uh, of England as the head of the English Church was a little bit unsettling to him. So, even all, with all of the accolades and the honors,、uh, Edmund was not going to cooperate with this new type of Christianity. So, he left Oxford. Left England and went to Belgium to live with a group of exiled English Catholics. Eventually, there he became a Jesuit priest and got a teaching、uh, position at the University of Prague. But Edmund Campion felt the, the pain and the frustration, the suffering of his fellow countrymen back home in England who were remaining Catholics. So he went back, which is to say, it's no small matter. At that time, being a Catholic in England、uh, it was not an easy thing. And as a Catholic priest, he had to be smuggled into the country because laws had been put in place that charged you large sums of money if you chose to remain Catholic. And all of the churches that were Catholic, well, they became Protestant, they became Anglican. And,、uh, and that's if they were left standing, if not, not, not destroyed. And priests often were hunted down like criminals. And if they were caught, oftentimes they were executed as, because they were seen as traitors and you know, being accused of high treason. So priests would go around to homes, celebrate Mass, hear confessions, encourage the people, and they would stay hidden in these homes in what were called priest holes, secret passages and places in homes. To protect and hide priests in the walls, in the roof, and under the floor. In some of these homes, you can, they still, these old homes、uh, still have these you know, hidden spots in them. So Edmund Campion returned to England knowing all of this. And within seven months, eventually he was found, he was arrested, and he was paraded through the streets of London. Then he was kept for months in solitary confinement in the Tower of London and tortured numerous times. The whole point being to break him down and eventually get him to give up、uh, his Catholic faith. But he did not. So eventually he was martyred, he was hung, he was drawn, and he was quartered. So we can look at stories like Edmund Campion, the apostles themselves, who all of them except St. John were、uh, martyred. And even other martyrs throughout the centuries, and、uh, look at them and our, and our faith, and, and consider, like, you know, there's a little bit of a disconnect, but because they can be, you know, just like these marvelous stories, right? But、uh, these days, of,、uh, we have, in, in the United States, there's this、uh, type of persecution that doesn't come at you, it just wants to discredit everything about you and just silence you. And,、uh, 
because we are in our culture today, it's become a place of live and let live. It is the gospel of indifference. I'm this, you're that, so who are you to come in and impose anything upon me? And if you do, uh, you're going to be shunned and you're going to be outcast. But let's go back to St. Paul and listen to what he said once again. An obligation has been imposed on me, and woe to me if I do not preach it. I have made myself a slave to all, so as to win over as many as possible. I have become all things to all, to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have a share in it. So St. Paul's, uh, he, there was no concept in his heart and in his mind about live and let live. These are not words of someone who thinks that all spiritual paths are equal, nor is he about living in a way of, I'm good, you're good, we're all good, and let's just, you know, leave each other alone, right? Our Lord even said himself and in today's gospel passage, let us go on to the nearby villages that I may preach there also. For this purpose have I come. So he went into the, their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. So today, it is not in season, and it really has never really been fully in season, uh, to be a Catholic and to proclaim the gospel. It's not popular, and uh, oftentimes it's just not uh, appreciated. Nevertheless, who we are by nature, God's sons and daughters, uh, our identity has been written on our hearts. It's part of our DNA uh, to be his children, as, and as his children, we must proclaim the good news and do so with love. It's a great challenge. It's intimidating for sure, and it can be dangerous at times. But we must do it. We have to do it because that is the identity that we have chosen uh, to lay hold of and be a part of. So may we be filled with the same zeal and love for our Lord and the salvation of souls like the martyrs, especially St. Edmund Campion and St. Paul the Apostle. We now proudly profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Entrusting ourselves to the grace and to 
the life of our Heavenly Father. Let us place before him these our needs and our prayers. For the needs of the people of God, the Universal Church, our parish faith family, and in a special way for all the people of St. Patrick's Parish, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For church leaders, may the Holy Spirit continue to inspire them in faithfully preaching, preaching the good news of the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For elected officials, may God grant them integrity in protecting all who are vulnerable, especially the poor, the elderly, and the unborn. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who struggle with disabilities, may God's strength accompany them in their hardship. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered in this holy place, may the, may the grace of this sacrament transform us in the image of Christ's love and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, May our loving God soon bring them to eternal union with him in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we, your sons and daughters, confidently place these our prayers before you, and we ask you to fulfill them. In the name of Jesus, your Son, who is Lord forever and ever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, 
that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn, of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis our Pope, Alan our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, Graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, 
and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
partakers in the one bread and the one chalice grant we pray so to live that made one in Christ we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world through Christ our Lord Amen. pray that you all have a very blessed week the Lord be with you and with your spirit may Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.